All right, all right. Welcome back to the CFO Swing and Watch. I hope you guys read the watch list to know what uh, names I'm looking at for this week. All right, so let's go over the overall market. All right, so uh, what happened on Friday was that we closed below the daily 50 SMA, which is the dark blue line here. All right, so whenever this happens, I'm expecting a short term or even a longer term uh, bear trend. Okay, so as we head uh, 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 below the 50 SMA, we tend to see a short term downtrend. All right, and we officially closed on Friday below the 50 SMA. So if we close at least two or three times below the 50 SMA, I am for sure going to see a confirmation that we are indeed going downhill uh, from this point on. All right, so. This week, I expect uh, the, uh, the price to kind of retest and come back up towards the 50 SMA or maybe even reclaim the 50 SMA this week if we do indeed, indeed see some positive catalysts uh, for this week. All right. But overall, uh, I am a bit bearish here um, as, as, as we see seen on Friday, this gap down and continued push lower by sellers all right, and with volume. Okay, uh, but you guys have to know that this volume was caused by uh, the simultaneous ex expirations of or expiring of option contracts. Okay, so you know th this this sell off can be just a little fluke, and we can uh, potentially bounce right back up uh, above the 50 SMA. However, okay, um, if we do indeed see a downtrend, a continuous downtrend, I'm looking for. A, a huge bounce at this $411.50 support, okay? This is a very crucial area. And if we, if we lose this, okay, if, if we lose this, uh, we can potentially head right back down towards the next area of support, which is around 404 to 405, okay? And, you know, if we do see this uh, uh, downtrend continue, and if we do indeed see in the next few weeks, uh, the price heading down to 404 or 405, I want to see uh, a huge bounce here so that we can start a nice uh, consolidation phase between 404 and 425. Okay, so that's a huge range, but that'll be very nice to see. Okay, because if you look at the weekly time frame here, okay, we are in a huge, huge uptrend here. Okay, so if I just draw a regular line here, okay, a regular support line, I can get my cursor here. Okay, oops, it's not my trend line there. All right, so if I just draw a quick line here, okay, at all the pivot points here, we've officially ended below this weekly ascending support line, okay? So we have to be a bit cautious here. All right, because a lot of selling volume came in as well, confirming that we want to go below this weekly trend line. All right, so I need you guys to be very, very careful with any swings that you're planning to take, all right, or especially any long-term swings, all right? So uh, I would say right now, it's not a time for you to put a lot of risk, okay? So do not put a lot of risk, all right? Uh, only to only look to play, put a lot, of, a lot of risk on specific day trades or scalps. Okay, so that, that's my uh, you know, current warning so far for you guys. But uh, you know, right now, it, it just looks like we are at a very important area, okay? So we can either go up to back to the upside or back to the downside, okay? Depending on uh, how Monday uh, looks, all right? But Friday, we, we had a very decisive close below the daily 50 SMA. That's all we know for now. All right, let's look at workhorse. Okay, so it's the first thing that we have on the watch list. Okay, so we have a nice bull flag. All right, but if we kind of narrow uh, our, our, uh, our viewpoint, our, our, our observation here is, uh, is what I was saying, um, we're looking at a nice uh, symmetrical triangle or a wedge. Now, these chart patterns can either break to the upside or to the downside, but for now, I'm leaning onto the bullish side. But however, I'm always, always ready uh, to see if uh, this chart panel will break to the downside, even if I'm biased to the upside. Okay, so if we look at the two hour time frame, all right, we can see that we've been consolidating inside this uh, chart pattern here uh, for quite some time now. All right, our, and um, we're, we're getting at to this point where these two trend lines are converging soon. All right, so as we get tighter and tighter, we will eventually have to break. Okay, and so we are also uh, right on top of the 50 SMA on the two hour time frame, So we can either blast off 
okay? Or we can uh, break to the downside, all right? So I, I'm looking for a, a, a push to the upside, but you know, if it breaks to the downside, I have your levels on the watch list for you guys to short, all right? So, you know, this is a name that uh, is, is right now very, very much influenced uh, by retail investors from Wall Street Bets and from other catalysts like Workhorse opening up a, a new uh, uh, a fight uh, for their um, uh, USPS uh, EV contract. All right. So this is something that you guys should be watching out for. All right. So win. Okay. Win Resorts. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys heard, have heard of this name before, right? You guys know this hotel, especially if you guys go to Las Vegas often. So Win here has been consolidating ever since um, early March. And the price really hasn't gotten anywhere. Um, we've just been going sideways up and down, uh, pretty much range bound uh, between levels of a major support and levels of major resistance. Um, as on the weekly, you guys can clearly tell that we've just been bouncing up and down with no real trend, right? And this is exactly what we want to see or we, we, what we like to see here, okay? Because of the fact that we are seeing um, some uh, uh, big uh, numbers of people coming back to uh, resorts all around the world, all right? As people are looking to, uh, you know, uh, start to gamble again, you know, uh, without any COVID restrictions, uh, people are looking to take uh, vacations, right? And so, you know, uh, win is looking to see, be, uh, be a very uh, nice winner if uh, we see some nice price movement, all right? So let's look at some weekly levels here that we need to be watching out for, all right? So on the weekly time frame, um, uh, the, the 200 SMA is, is pretty much flat, okay? And I love to see this because the 50 SMA here has a chance to get right back above and start a golden cross, all right? So the 50 SMA crosses above the 200 SMA, that's what we call a golden cross, all right? And if you guys don't know anything about technical analysis, please, please uh, look to join my four weeks program or you can simply get my beginner trading guide to start a great foundation for your trading journey, all right? So with this, information, all right, if we see the 200 SMA really not moving much uh, anymore, okay, that means the price is continued, it's going to continue to stay uh, range bound here, all right, between major levels of support around 122, okay, and around uh, uh, the major level of resistance around 132 or 131.50, okay, these are our weekly levels, all right, and there's another level of support that you guys need to be watching out for, but currently it's, it is it is going to be a level of resistance since we're below it, okay? So this level, $127, is going to be a level of uh, resistance currently right now, okay? Um, but if we're able to get above 127, we should be able to use it as major level of support, okay? So if you go back onto the daily time frame here now, okay? We want to see, okay? a big break above this 127, like I mentioned, okay? Because this is also a level on the weekly time frame. okay? So the bigger the time frame, the more significant the level will be, all right? So um, if we start to head up higher and higher, there's another huge level of resistance around 137 or 136 area, okay? That we need to break, okay? So we've already had uh, multiple touches right here and two major touches here. So if we get a third touch and we break above, Okay, we can most likely start uh, heading up higher and higher and higher. And back on the weekly time frame, we could likely see the uh, 50 SMA uh, crossing above the 50 and forming that weekly golden cross. Okay, all right, let's look at ADSK. Okay, so I have a naked chart here for you guys so I can do some real uh, time charting here. Okay, so we have uh, this all time high level here at 321.13. So I'll put that. Uh, level right there because it's going to be uh, a, a huge level to break uh, uh, a huge level of resistance that the price will need to break um, in the near term future if we start heading upwards. Okay, so at this point, you know, actually, let's let's make this faster here. Make this process a little faster. Took. There you go. You know, at this point, it's bread and butter to me, okay? So if, if I see some levels that I want to, uh, uh, you know, look out for in the near-term future, I'm going to immediately draw it out, okay? So, you know, this is all a matter of practice, experience, okay? Uh, especially the practice part, because uh, being able to actually observe with your naked eye or where the levels are at is very, very important to, to, to be able to do, 
So or else you won't be able to, you know, draw it out, right? Okay, so, so far we have these uh, horizontal levels that I've drawn here, okay? Now let's draw out uh, the actual chart pattern that I'm looking at, okay? We're in this huge macro, macro, very, very big uh, ascending uh, triangle here, or actually it's not an ascending triangle, it's actually a, a very huge wedge, okay? So we have this very huge in initial uh, run to the upside here, okay, it's an impulsive run here, and then we retraced, all right, and we bounced at, at levels of support and rejected at levels of resistance until we started forming these two uh, uh, descending and ascending trend lines, all right? So this one can also break to the downside or to the upside, but I've, I've provided you guys the long-term entries and short-term entries as well, okay? So, so far, I'm looking at a level of 282 for a potential break to the upside, all right? And uh, if the price uh, goes uh, starts to head below and we start to see a downtrend happen, okay? Because of the fact that we are below the 50 SMA here, okay? And if you see a huge re rejection below the 50 SMA and the sellers just come in and slap the ask, okay? And we start going down and down and down and buyers can bid the price up, we will most likely see a nice short-term trend to the downside, all right? So uh, one other major area of support I'm looking at is this level right here, okay? 275. All right, um, if we see a break to downside at this uh, converging point where the ascending support uh, is touching this 275 uh, support and we see a break below this point here, okay, we will most likely break to the downside with heavy, heavy volume, okay? And so, you know, the one thing that I have to kind of uh, give you guys a caution uh, is um, a cautionary warning here is that if we break to the downside, and if you're short on this name, you have to watch out because there's a lot of major areas of support where a lot of buying happened here, okay? So if you look at this area here, okay, this is where a lot of buyers were accumul accumulating this, uh, uh, this stock uh, and there was no position, okay? And that's the reason why it broke out to the uh, upside here, all right? So if we go to the downside here, if we come back down to this little area here, this huge area, not a little area actually, uh, around the 225-ish to the 250-ish, if you come back down there, you should be ready for some very, very wicked bounces, all right? Because uh, these buyers are gonna come back, all right? Because th this is where they're heavily, heavily accumulating. I, I mean, just look at the volume here, all right? This, this is some heavy, heavy buying, all right? So make sure you guys are careful for that if you guys are deciding to short this name. All right. Let's look at run, all right? So run is a solo name and, and these green names have been doing very, very well, okay? I mean, on, on uh, I believe this is Wednesday here, we had a huge influx of buyers as you broke above this uh, $46 level of resistance, all right? And so the uptrend is looking to continue, all right? However, okay, however, the uh, we are kind of overbought here, okay? I need to see this name kind of chill here, all right? But uh, overall, we are forming a very bullish trend here as we're looking to form a nice bullish flag here, okay? So if you reject one more time, okay, and if you get tighter and tighter, we might break to the upside, okay? However, we are a little bit far away from the 21 SMA here, okay? So if I'm on a two-hour time frame and I see this, I'm looking for one more pullback, okay? Potentially a pullback towards the $50 area, okay? And if I see that, I want to start buying. Okay, so this is also an, a previous level of resistance, uh, which is now turned into a new level of support as we broke above this level of, uh, of resistance. So if we reject hard around this 52.85-ish uh, level here, that's making on a two-hour time frame, we could potentially see a downside movement to the 50s, which will uh, probably allow me to uh, start buying around the 50s, all right, for another move up higher, okay? So you guys have to watch out Okay, don't get uh, uh, an early entry because you think that's going to continue up higher, right? Uh, but you know what? This name also has been hitting uh, Wall Street bets as well. So, you know, I may be wrong here uh, where, uh, you know, Wall Street bets can suddenly run up this, uh, this, this uh, name pre-market. And then suddenly uh, as the market opens, they can all start selling and crash that stock down, okay? This is what also happened to Crow Sar, uh, I, I don't really know how to say it, but CRSR, okay? Corsar Gaming, okay, uh, where they um, I bought up the, uh, this name uh, pre-market uh, and they just absolutely dumped it, okay? So this is the same thing that can happen here, 
All right. So if you know if you can't get in, all right, just just you know take your hands off the keyboard. All right. No need to start buying. All right. So you know let the prices settle. Okay. All right. So now we're looking at Apple here. Okay. So Apple has been on our watch list for a couple of weeks now. Okay. So we are finally at this $132 level that I've been mentioning the past few weeks. Okay. And we saw a huge uh, a push. Okay. Past level. Okay. But buyers weren't able to, uh, to uh, pass the level yet. Okay. So which is fine, which is fine. Okay. Uh, this just allows me because I have a long position already to accumulate even more Apple here. All right. As we are starting to let uh, this 21 SMA uh, catch up if we start to uh, find a tighter range here below this level of resistance, okay? All I want to see uh, for, for the bull side here, okay, for Apple is for the price to uh, tighten up below the level of resistance. I do not want to see a pullback all the way back down to this level of support, this acing level of support, because that means sellers are still a full on in control, and there's a higher probability that the sellers will push this uh, level, uh, this price lower and break below this level of ascending support, okay? So I want to see a tight level, a uh, tight uh, a sideways action, okay? Below this level of uh, resistance, all right? I, I need to see that or else um, I will need to get out this long position on Apple, okay? For a little loss, but it is what it is, okay? All right, now, Netflix, okay, this is the extra name that I'm looking at. So Netflix is looking to have a nice uh, a pump upwards here after, you know, this gap down, okay? So if we start to uh, get above this 505 level here, $505, okay, we could potentially have a nice six or five point runner back above 511 or 512, okay? And if we, uh, you know, hold up this level here around 512, we could potentially start filling in this gap here. Okay, that was made during earnings. All right. So, you know, some major support that you guys had to be looking out for is around uh, 488 or 490, if you guys want to kind of round it up. Okay. And um, uh, some intermittent support would be around $500 or five, 498. Okay. So, you know, those are some levels that you guys should be watching out for. And also, we are also seeing some uh, crossovers on SMA. We got this death cross on the 50 and the 200. So this is when the 50 SMA crosses below the 200 SMA. So that usually indicates a uh, bearish trend for Netflix. However, on the short term, okay, we're seeing a nice um, uh, uh, crossover of the 10 on the 21. Okay, so this usually uh, indicates a short term bullish trend. Okay, so if, if this happens, I usually want to see the price break above levels of resistance, okay? And then my price, uh, my price target or my profit target will be around uh, the daily 50 SMA, okay? Those are usually great short-term swings that you can, uh, you know, uh, play, all right, to the long side. Now, GH. GH also has a very similar kind of look to Netflix, except it doesn't have uh, that gap down. Uh, it actually has a very large uh, bearish trend to the downside, but now we're kind of bouncing and we're going sideways here, okay? Now, the reason why I chose GH is that after a big, big bullish day like this on Thursday, on Friday, okay, we actually kind of gapped down, but instead of selling off, we recreated a nice inside day, okay, with immense amount of volume, okay? So on the daily volume, the average daily volume was around 1.03 million, but on Friday, it was around 2.05 million. All right, that's, that's very huge, right? That's double the amount of daily volume that it gets, right? And also, it's a, it's a inside candlestick, which means you can see a potential continuation of this uh, oversold bounce that it had, okay? So some levels that you need, you need to be watching out for is this $124 level, okay? This has proven to be a significant area of resistance, okay? And so, you know, if we are able to go past this level of resistance, we should slowly come back up above the 130s, okay? So um, some other levels of support that you guys need to know, let me go back to the two hour time frame here, okay? Is around this level, let me move this up, okay? Around $114, okay? So this is a major, major level of support. All right, and you know, if you guys are looking uh, even even on a shorter time frame than a two hour, okay, 
a major level you guys should be watching out for is around $119, okay? Or 118.50 as well, okay? Those two levels could work. All right, that's, that's a little tiny area that you guys want to be watching out for. And that should be an area of demand, okay? If that fails, okay, then you guys should see a nice little flush back down towards the $114 level, all right? Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, the stock picks for this week, all right? Now let's look at uh, a cryptocurrency that I'm currently in, okay? So ADA, okay, ADA. All right, so ADA is currently back, all right, uh, at the previous levels here, okay? So let me do some, a quick technical analysis here. All right, so the, the price is right back to where it was accumulating here, where there's a lot of buyers accumulating. Okay, as we're starting to flag out. Okay, we are flagging and flagging and flagging until we broke out with immense amount of volume. And then we sold off during the Bitcoin uh, 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 sell off here. Okay, so what, so why am I, uh, you know, why am I long here and what levels am I looking at? Right, so I'm currently long around 1.40. Uh, okay, and so, you know, on the daily time frame, it seems like we are uh, seeing a nice bounce here above. 1.33, okay? And there's also a level, a previous level of resistance. So now there's a new support area, okay? So if we uh, continue to hold this level of support, we can currently come back to uh, around 1.60, okay? And so far it looks like uh, we are doing pretty well as we are now above uh, or actually holding above the 10 SM here, SMA here, which is, above, which is this uh, red line here. Okay, so this is my stock, uh, my cryptocurrency, excuse me, pick for this week, all right? And I'll be looking to, uh, to take some profits if we uh, get back above uh, 1.60, all right? So, you know, this is looking like a nice uh, long-term cryptocurrency as well because I like uh, what Cardano is doing, uh, the project itself, okay? So, you know, this is looking like a very nice long-term cryptocurrency to be invested in, all right? Okay, so that is it for uh, the C uh, CFO Stringer Watch. Okay, if you guys are not subscribed yet, I highly, highly recommend you guys to subscribe. It's only $15 per month. You guys can completely make back the $15 you pay every single month with these weekly watch lists. Okay, so, you know, I've already had people in the, uh, and, uh, who are subscribers uh, making back 10 times, 100 times more. Uh, okay, maybe not 100 times, 100 times. I'm a little bit, um, uh, you know, uh, stretching that, but you know, uh, there are people who are making some good money with, with, with these watch list names here, uh, whether it be there are uh, using option contracts or just regular equity. All right. So good luck to you all. All right. I'll see you guys next week.